Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, joined by my lovely wife, Miss Southern Shell. And Shell, we got a guest with us this we got week. A guest. Mr. Mark Williams from Swine Life BBQ. Mark, how's it going? It's Friday. It is Friday. We've been working hard this week. Have been. Ready for the weekend? Ready to get after them deer? Soon? Very much so. <laughs> Most people don't realize that Mark has joined. Uh, He's joined the team. The That's Hall right. Barbecue right team. He is part of the pro staff now. I'm on about pro a, staff. But you, do, you do such a phenomenal job. We had to hire you. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good forklift operator. Good on a broom. Good. You can run a broom, a broom with the best of them. I've yeah. seen it firsthand. What is that little specialty broom you brought? It's like a horsehair broom or something? No, oh, that's the mane of a line is what it is. No, it's, <laughs> it's a good story, though. It's probably an endangered broom. Then. Probably so. So um, the thing I wanted to jump in and talk about, well, first, first we'll talk about what Mark's been up to. He's been doing his videos. He's got a few new things. A few. It's, uh, it's been busy. It's uh, Everybody thinks doing videos, you got all the time in the world. And then when you jump to barbecue, you got more time in the world. No, it's pretty much slam till six o'clock every day, if not later. So <laughs> yeah, that's the way it goes. So you've since you've been on here talking uh, with us on the podcast, you've upgraded a lot of stuff at the house, right? Yeah. So we redone the whole back porch, got it set up to where it kind of fits our needs for filming, and tried to get the lighting better. You know, still got a long ways to go and get things together, and still get some stuff hung up on the walls. But it's coming together. It's coming together pretty good. That was a pretty good process, wasn't it? About two months. It was a, wow. a little bit more invasive than I thought it would be, <laughs> adding a back porch, but it was worth it. They didn't, we, didn't tear anything beautiful. up? <laughs> no, it didn't tear anything up. It looked like it. It looked pretty. Uh, first day I got home, and they're supposed to be building this nice fireplace. looked like a King Tut hut in my backyard. And <laughs> yeah. was not what I thought it was going to be, but it turned out excellent. Yeah. I've seen it first place. I, I'd really like it. I think it would be cool. Um, if you did like a walkthrough video of how that back area is laid out and everything, just put that on YouTube. Yeah, it's on the list. We got a still got to get a couple more pits out there and get some stuff organized and cleaned up. So, what do you, what kind of what kind of other pits do you think about adding? Kettles next, some type of kettle, either a Weber, or one of the slow and sears. You don't have a Weber? I thought you had a Weber. Man, Brian stole it back. <laughs> what? <laughs> was that that was his? The big one, the yeah, twenty six inch. Yeah. I you never owned it. Ones. Yeah. You done some yeah because you did some yeah. videos with it with slow and sear and that stuff. We done. He he repoed it. Yeah, he repoed it back. <laughs> Had to get on to him. You gotta pay that Weber note, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, he let you fall behind. I'd I guess so. Up. I'd have caught you up. He let me go two weeks. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, I'm a big Weber fan, but I do want to see that slow and sear grill they have. And I think it'll be a good addition. I mean, I've never cooked on that thing, and you, you, I mean, you did videos with it. What do you think about it? Honestly, is it the is slow it worth and sear, the, money? the so, slow and sear attachment works really well. Like I like it because I mean it. It technically just a half pan. I mean it just holds your coals, but the way it gets all your coals that much further in the radius of that grill, you get a like a lot more room on the other side for your low, you know, your low and slow cooks. Yeah, so it's basically a diverter for yeah. the, for a Weber. And then they've upgraded them. Some of the new ones they got like a different type like expanded metal grade at the bottom a lot nicer stainless and i mean they're they're coming on long slow and sear ain't messing around they got some good looking kettles now is it the one that has like the little channel to put water in to mm-hmm. even give it like a heat sink you can put water Did you do that no i never use the water which i never done any kind of long cooks they were all you know hour hour and a half cooked tops so it wasn't nothing any further than that you need to do that old uh thanksgiving turkey on a, on a kettle with the slow and sear see how it turns out man it's- no you don't why? <laughs> That's our plan. <laughs> oh, we're gonna do it on a Weber. I'm not doing a turkey on a Weber right now. I don't think. I mean, I do want to do one, but not it, this. You told me to write it down on the list and put it on the schedule. Yeah, but I'm just doing a, a different turkey. No, oh, basically okay. what it is, doing... he wants me to be the guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> does it work or does it not? So that, what are you doing? That's a. Um, what am I doing for my turkey? Yeah, I've got a couple different ideas. Yeah, for I turkey. thought you were doing a Weber turkey. I'm just close, Michael. A turkey on the Weber. Is that what's on the list? I don't remember. I got it on the list, and it's on schedule. When it gets that week, I'll think about it. <laughs> You'll make the call. I, I, I was ultimately, I said I was just going to do a classic smoked turkey, like like you used to see how they recommend doing them. I'm going to do a brine, probably like a. I'm thinking about doing a 48 hour brine on it. 
Yeah. Super long. Get some moisture in it. Not do too much to it. I don't want to inject. So that's why I'm going to do 48 hour. And then I'm just going to the season. I'm going to keep it simple. I really want that Norman Rockwell turkey. Try to get the skin yep. to where it's, yep. you know, golden brown. It looks real pretty and all that. That's the turkey I'm going for this year. Oh, I, sorry to interrupt. Just oh, no, Shell. <laughs> this is your show. I'm just along for the yeah. ride. She wants me to not give you ideas yeah. on what to cook on. She was like, you, you write up that yourself. <laughs> Did you come up with you, it. Don't you get nobody else to do that? But no, we got a couple of turkey recipes I think we're going to toy with. Um, it's it's too easy to cook them on a pellet grill. Man, I'm, I'm a pellet spoiled. grill cooks a beautiful turkey, Dead. man. It, I've never had one in the oven as good as a pellet Ooh. grill. I want to do one on a stick burner, but I know that's going to be... Outlaw turkey? Mm-hmm. That's a good recipe, man. Uh, we did the turkey breasts on they the... They were um, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, those were good. Man, Texas yeah, style Texas style burn. and stick burner. It's just, it's some it's it's as good as turkey. And you know what? For our actually Thanksgiving meal, I'm probably gonna serve those because yeah. the breast. I mean, the whole bird looks cool, and it's kind of like the traditional thing to do. But as far as what I'm gonna eat, man, I just want that breast cooked in butter <laughs> with some <laughs> seasoning on it, and let it just get juicy and all the moisture in there, and slice it up. It's where it's at. I think a like a spatchcock turkey would do really good on the stick burner, just yeah. because the way the airflow is. I think it'll help your skin a lot better. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't know. I bet it cook a whole one good too. I mean, we've done a spatchcock. Say, yeah, was it on the pellet? Mm, I think I did it. Yeah, I think I did it on pellet. Grill. I think we did. Yeah, it was good. I mean, it's just a faster way to cook them. That's the only thing spatchcock it does for me. It's like if you ain't got time to to roast it all together. Cut that backbone out, lay it out, and get it done in two and a half hours, whatever. See, Speeds I love, it up. Like, I love turkey because, I mean, you can put some good flavors in turkey. Now, a lot of times, like, cooking it whole, you kind of are limited to what all you can do because you still want to keep that presentation. But, yeah. man, you spatchcock one out or have just, like, a, a boneless breast or anything like you've done, I mean, you can really get some flavor on turkey. I'm going to tell you, if you built, like, remember when uh, Lambert came and dud that chicken on that bed of herbs mm-hmm. nest? It, That's a good a idea. A whole big turkey on just... All kinds of herbs and citrus like that. And on the drum. Spatchcock. That would be good on drum, too. The drum would be perfect. Just build a big old nest on the on the crate. <laughs> put that turkey on there, spatchcocked out. Might have to do that one. I wonder if it... Yeah, that shall write that down. <laughs> That's an interesting one there. We'll let y'all be the guinea pig on that one. <laughs> we'll try it. I'll try anything. I might not film it, but I'll try to cook it. <laughs> oh, no, we'll <laughs> film it, it but it out. just goes... Yeah, it goes. It goes, to, it goes to the other. We got a couple of those just sitting back there the waiting. Barbecue fails. <laughs> the next I've got some ideas working on that. Um, so one thing that we have started new is we're doing a review channel. Yeah, that's so that <laughs> that Mark talking about that slow and series was a great segue to that. Yeah, we just got off track. We did, but um, we we were trying to come up with an idea for us to. Uh, work on something kind of together because we all, we both have our own channels, but then we were going to start up another one where we're kind of not, not smoking. You know, we're away from the cooker. It's not recipes. It's just us uh, trying out new products that we hadn't tried yet or some of the old stuff that we had that we like and kind of doing our take on it, our reviews yeah. of it. So we called it, we decided we came up with it when we sat down and, we talked about a channel name. Names forever. are horrible. Like, like I can't stand right. trying to come up with a name. It's hard, ain't it? it it's all all the good ones are took. Yeah. yeah. But we said since we're not smoking, not doing recipes, we're gonna call it out of the smoke. <laughs> we're not in the smoke. We're out of the smoke talking. And so that's what it is. Uh, it's it's kind of it's early concept. We filmed a few videos. Now they're know gonna, where it's gonna go. We don't know where it's gonna go. <laughs> but Where's it's gonna be cool because it's like a way for us to showcase stuff that we're. My idea was if I would spend my money on it, I want to tell somebody that, yeah. yeah. But if it's not something I'd spend my money on, I'm going to say I'll pass. And that's the whole premise of this. There's a lot of Whether games. Mark's testing it out or I'm testing it out, doesn't, or we're testing it out together, it doesn't matter. But should you spend your hard earned barbecue play money, play money <laughs> on this, on these products? You know, I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with, I guess, any of them. I don't know. We've only done a few. Um, only I guess one got the no pass for me. <laughs> I mean, to wait and see the video. Which one that was? I think about too. You know, it's a laid back setting. It's just me and you talking about the product. Yeah. There's no structure to it. It's just what we think, yeah. and I think that's going to be you know pretty successful and you know 
catch a lot of people's attentions. We hope so. Yeah. Hopefully. Well, we get questions constantly. Do you, you know what to use? Do you like this product? Do you like this grill? And you know, it's kind of hard to answer. That's where I, that's kind of what stuff. started that whole idea was answering people. Have you tried? You know, this Joe product. Blow's grill gadget. Yeah. You know? And I was like, no, I never heard of it. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to contact them and say, or just buy. One. I like. I'd rather just order one. That way, they don't know. Because I don't want somebody to feel like I'm or we're yeah hyping know, them up paid, or downplay yeah, them. Yeah, paid to do it. You know, that's because it's not that kind that's of the thing. Whole thing. It's like we're if somebody wants to send us something honesty. to try it out, we're gonna yeah. try it out. But I ain't guaranteeing you gonna like what we're gonna say about it. <laughs> yeah, sure, we'll try it, and we'll put you on blast too. <laughs> well, too, you know, it's going on YouTube whether we like it or not. <laughs> so you think before you try to send it to us. Like our channels both are you know recipe based. Yeah. And I sometimes feel like, you know, we may have a new grill on there or something to try out. I don't want to take away from the recipe yeah. talking about what we're cooking yeah. on. Yeah. Yes. See, I, I, we've done that. And w- there's been, I guess you would call them reviews or where we've tried new products out on the channel. And those videos never do as well because it takes away from, from the what actual we're trying recipe to do. you're yeah. trying to do. It's not, it's a different, I mean, not that it's a different audience, but I think that people come to like your channel to see you cook a recipe and they come to our channel to see us cook, do a recipe. And well, so when you're pumping in a product that I'm trying, you know, whether it's a thermal pen or whatever it is, it, yeah. I don't want it to be salesy and I don't want these reviews to be salesy either. I want them to just be, this is what we think about it. You yeah. know, give some pros, give some cons. Would you spend your money on it? I mean, what, it, I mean, it's, so the concept is really easy. It's, you know, what this thing is, how we tried it out and does it do what they say it does or Pro what we like cons. or don't like. Yeah. And, and two, should, should you, you spend know, your money on it. I think we're both comfortable with, you know, the tools and gadgets we use every day. Yeah. And this makes us step out of our element. And I mean, we found some products that I think is awesome. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we we found some stuff that we never would have really gave a chance until now. And, I agree completely. You know, we've got one coming out on the grill gun, and that's the coolest thing. I mean, <laughs> if everybody doesn't want them for Christmas, something's wrong with you. So what's the grill gun? It's a flamethrower. <laughs> it's a dead gun flamethrower. Legalized flamethrower. Yeah, that you can hook up to a camping bottle or you can hook it up to a propane bottle, rig it up with a backpack, and go burn the daggum forest. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> but you could. I mean, it's a daggum. It's a flamethrower. What do you? I mean, don't you think it is more? I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, it'll get hot. It'll get. Yeah, aluminum pans don't like the grill gun. Oh, no, no. <laughs> aluminum tables, in general. Aluminum hands, arm hair, camera lenses. <laughs> you screw it all up with this flamethrower. A lot was sacrificed for that video. <laughs> yeah, it's called a grill gun. The one we had are. Did it uh, mess up camera lenses? It could. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Dude got a little close to yeah, it. He, so was, he, he back backed up. up quick. But uh, it, so it's like a pistol. It's got a, if you think of a handgun. Like it a looks pistol. like a 1911. Yeah, not, yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. It looks like a 45, right? 1911 Colt 45 with a long extension on it. And then the flamethrower end, which is like a little jet burner. So it's kind of looks like a suppressor that's kind of skinny you know, or something <laughs> like that. With the end, but then you, it's got a trigger squeeze to adjust the throttle on the gun. It's got an igniter. It's got the little valve on top, so it controls your gas flow, turn it on and off. And then it'll hook up to a bottle, um, either with the hose attachment or just a camping bottle screwed in the bottom. So It worked out good. Worked out real good. Yeah. I, I now would. I just want to see the long gun version. <laughs> the, the 50 the, cal. Yeah, thank you for the 50 cal flamethrower. I, I Get thought one that on. was the long uh-uh. Oh no! No, no! We need to get it built on like a Barrett chassis, big yeah. barrel, big, where you can throw it up. Both hands. Line. You can aim it just how you want to do. <laughs> Sear a steak from across uh, the room. They have one. Uh, was it? Do Elon, we have Elon the, Musk made one, right? Oh, but yeah, they had yeah. a limited run on them. They it's were about not a flamethrower. Yeah, that's the name of it. Not a flamethrower. <laughs> oh, it looks slick. I wanted one bad when they, when I first saw them. I was like, oh, I got to get one, but they'd already been pre ordered. They only made. Like thousand of them. Yeah. So it was like a startup campaign thing, and they never were making them for resale. But the the gas on it was all contained, so the whole system was in the in the flame, not in the not a flamethrower. Yeah. So you don't have to like hold a bottle. You on don't the back see it. it looks like a hose. It's like a gun that you can just roll. But I don't know if it works as good as a grip gun. I don't know. Tough shoes to feel right there. It is. If they could figure out a way to to get it to where when you tilt it. Where it don't, you know, vapor lock itself, yeah. I guess, or liquid lock itself. Which, I mean, you're dealing with liquid propane. There's there's no way around yeah. it, you know? I don't know if there's... Why couldn't you aerosol it? Like, 
Like, like, that might be even more sketchy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking thinking those up potato guns. You know, yeah. you squirt the stuff in Aquanet. there. Yeah, it shoots it. You know, that stuff will burn. I don't know what right. Oh, no. It's alcohol. Burn. So, it burns really well. Yeah. <laughs> you used to build those, yeah, didn't you? It's a surprise. So did you, doing those videos yesterday and, you know, going through and kind of, it basically changed my mindset on what we were filming. Do you have anything like, you like, hey, we got to try this or anything different, you reckon? Um, man, there's like that slow and sear grill. I'd love to get, we got to get our hands on one of those. Are they back ordered? Didn't you check them out or somewhere? They were when I looked, but I think, I think one or two of the models. Because I want to see that, how, you know, how one of those work. I mean, it's basically like a Weber platform. I mean, you know, people knock off that grill all the time, but I would like to see how it works with that attachment, see if it's worth the money or not. Because yeah. it, I mean, I think because the slow and sear itself, I have to look it up. Wasn't it like 150 bucks? Something like the, that, Mark? I think so. Let me look I'll there. have to slow and see. Everybody's searching. <laughs> yeah, I probably shouldn't do this on camera. But yeah, it's like $169. That's what I thought it was. Uh, they have different so ones, the though. They got one series? for 60 bucks. Explain, it looks like. Explain the slow and sear it's, to me. It's basically like a deflector system. So if you think of those little charcoal baskets that come with the Weber. Uh, so it's an aftermarket add on type Yeah, well, deal. it started out that way. Yeah. It was an aftermarket add on for Weber, Weber kettles. But but um, they, now they're making their own grill. So basically, it, oh. it goes like a third of your. Your it's like kettle. a half moon almost. Yeah, and it's got a, like a little slot for liquid water for like a heat def- deflector in there or a baffle, I guess you that's call it. it. That's it. And it you put all your coals on one side. Go ahead and put a couple of them in the cart. <laughs> it says two zones are better than one. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> so, it, But so now they're making a kettle grill or a kettle yeah, style grill. Yeah. And, so, and it's, they got a, a ceramic, it looks yeah. like, or a metal. I don't right. know. We need to order but it's one. Like an Mark needs one in his house anyway. If it works, he can just take it. We'll make it work. Yeah, we'll, we'll take that out of your check. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's like four weeks. <laughs> but no, uh, that's one. That's the first one that comes to mind. I mean, um, you know, I hadn't really thought about what other stuff I want to try. But well, what else uh, did y'all try yesterday? So you did the grill gun. We did the grill gun. And that that one was one got video. A- that, that one, one got, got a super pack. I mean, <laughs> yes, I was spinning. I feel like I want that thing. <laughs> I feel like you don't necessarily want that just for cooking. No, I just want it because it's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I want to burn down a <laughs> wash nest. Hey, <laughs> clean out deer stands, out wash deer nest. Stands, yeah. There's all kinds of applications for flamethrower. I don't know. Our deer stands are plastic. That table didn't fare well. <laughs> it yeah, it would melt into the ground. Um, you got to be careful with that thing. We did. So we did. What we did, we did. To get started, we did four of them in one day, and it wasn't it wasn't hard to do four no, in one it day. Didn't, it wasn't no, bad. it wasn't smooth like I thought yeah. it did. We did um, something that was really cool: the meter, which is what it's like new technology for probe thermometers, wireless probe thermometers. How much? You know, say I'm a it. big thermo works. You got some. Oh You've man! Got some competition yeah. Well, thermo see works. if they could figure out a way to use ThermalWorks probes, like the get their probes yeah. wireless. Right. I love the ThermalWorks probes so much better. That's been my downfall with some of these the new thermometer gadgets that's come out is the size of their probes. Uh, because what was it? The grill eye. The when I when I use that and I use the grill eye controller all the time. It's on my comp rig because I can hook up six things to it and six probes, but they're all wired. This meter is four probes wireless. So you stick the probe in your meat. There's no wire coming out of your smoker. Somehow through the, the magic <laughs> magic of barbecue, it's sending signals through that smoker wall to a control box with no wires. Yeah. And then it links to your phone. And it's also giving you app. ambient. Yeah. It gets, so, yeah, not only does it give you internal temperature, they've got it to really re- reads temperature of the air around the meat yeah. out the back of the probe. So I guess it's reading from two reading spots both. of the probe. I tell you what I'd love to do with those is next time we do a big like catering event, put those probes and butts on a rotisserie, and then you could pull your, your cook up and see that temperature change from the top of the bottom Watch of that it. rotisserie oh, as yeah. it's going. Because yeah. you know it's not the same temperature top to bottom. Hey, yeah, no. We're doing that uh, Thursday? Yeah, we got to cook 100 <laughs> butts yeah. next week, so we could definitely run that. And you could run it in four different positions on that spindle. On the rotisserie, see what, it's so doing. You can see what it's doing at all times, at all <laughs> places. That's something we got to do. Then you could stop it, like you could just stop it and really see what the zones were. So you know, like number one yeah. spots at twelve o'clock, right? And two, you know, all the way around, work. And see what it was. 
Oh, yeah. And over time and a long cook, they always even out, but it's still interesting. Nobody's ever had that capability to watch in a big rotisserie. To, What's to really going on? Temps. And so we tested out that product. And it, man, it worked jam up i like the app and the app capabilities and that the, oh, yeah. the way they built that out well it's, it's very user-friendly yeah it's, like that's the simple. biggest thing you can't, yeah you can't mess it up connecting it was easy like you pull the app up turn the thing on it finds it connects to it you go bluetooth on this one you can go wi-fi which is awesome because it gives you unlimited range as long as you got Wi-Fi six. Now, see, I hadn't tested it out. I so was on like, the same. You Wi-Fi. could go to the grocery store and still watch. I don't know that. I need to. We need to get verify get further. that. I think you can. I think if as long Wi-Fi. as because it, it goes to the cloud, so you can get that anywhere. Yeah, if it's know. sending it to the cloud and it's staying there, and then you can log into that app through LTE mm-hmm. or whatever carrier you have, you know, and see it on your phone no matter where you're at. Oh, man, that's a game changer. See, Traeger's supposed to have that technology. They do. They do yeah. on Wi-Fi. Yeah. I just, I've never had any luck getting mine connected yeah. home. I mean, even, I don't know if I need a firmware update or what, but I need I need some tech tech support on that. Cause <laughs> I tried the other day because, you know, we got the new fiber internet at home. And I went in, went to the signals, it found the network, and then it just won't find the grill. I don't know if it's because that Traeger's three years old. How old's, that one's pretty old, ain't it? It might be older, older than that. Yeah, we got it when I first moved into the mm-hmm. house, so it's four years old anyway. But the thing about the meter app, it tells you, like, you can pull up what I'm cooking a chicken, mm-hmm. whole chicken, and it gives you an uh, estimated. I just got, yeah, pre-built in cook times for all kinds of stuff. Yeah. It And, yeah, you're right. It does tell you the estimated time, too. Yeah. That's super cool. You and this set it to whatever. I haven't seen any of them. Pretty accurate you worked with, with any thermometers that's no. done that? I mean, you put in there, you know, I can't remember which one it was I toyed with years ago. And it had like something in there, but it wasn't like, you got 15 minutes and your chicken's done, you know? Yeah. Oh, and it's in the alerts. Like, okay, it's time to rest. Get it off the grill now. Get it off the grill now. <laughs> well, I mean. And then it rests just like you're supposed to. And it carries it. They figure out the carryover. So I, me and you both, we've cooked a ton of briskets. Yeah. So I kind of know, all right, a 12-pound brisket, we're going to be done in this amount of time. You know, you got your timeline figured out. We cooked that brisket for that catering event at the house. I Put the meter in it, put it on the pellet grill, set it at 200, went to bed, popped up and looked. And it was like midnight at the time. And it says, your brisket will be done in four hours. And I'm like, there's no, no way. Yeah. Ain't no way. Four hours that brisket was done. Really? And I was like, and that was the one I told you. I was like, I don't know why it cooked faster. I have no idea. It's a magic. But <laughs> meter it, magic. It knew. At four o'clock, I was up <laughs> putting a brisket in the camera. So I don't know. They Whoever designed that thing, built it, man, they're pretty dick. I'm smart. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's the technology in there is awesome. It is. It, it's really smart. They've been working on it for a while. I remember that product being like leaked or, you know, talked about concept years ago. Yeah. And I imagine the the probe has to be so big to hold yeah, all that yeah, technology. Yeah, for real. It's got a it's MacBook in that probe yeah. somewhere. <laughs> yeah. That's the one thing. Now they need to figure out how to downsize the probe. That's probably coming. Yeah. It's only a matter of time. Yeah. yeah. So what else did y'all review? You did the meter. You did the uh, did grill the gun. Uh, the PK Go. PK Go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the new, uh, I call it PK-180. Yeah, it's a PK-170. <laughs> it's, it's like a half version of it. It's a to-go version of a 360, which is, you know, their home patio model, whatever, bigger than the classic. Did they model. make any changes from the 360 to this 180? Oh, yeah. Different vent system. Um, yeah, I thought it was a different vent system. Yeah. They don't have, like, the dialing vents. It's got these little vent doors that open on the front, and it's got a... a I do like the thermometer probe hole. So if you are running a wired thermometer to that cooker, it's got its own little trap door that, you know, rolls shut or cut. But it also, Mark talked about that. It's, you could probably run it low and slow. Yeah. Use that as your exhaust vent. Cause it's up to, yeah, it's up to the top. Tapers down the side. How big is it? It's pretty small. I mean, like maybe a half inch hole. It's not big at all. Yeah. If it's, if it's it's even that, it may be a quarter inch or so. I don't know. It's pretty small. Is it like a slot or a, no, it's actually it's a little daisy wheel. I mean, oh, real okay. small though. Okay. Yeah, it, and it's kind of on the downturn of the pit where it kind of curves right in there on the side. I so, bet you pick up some convection with that exhaust being a little bit lower. It's gonna have to go to the top and then come and down then to get out. out. So it'll yeah. If you put your fire on one side, that's that might work. You can, it's big enough to cook a butt on. Oh yeah. I don't know if you're gonna cook ribs on it, but mm-hmm. you can cook a you can cook a butt on it. It's a, you know it's a. It's a to-go cooker. It's something meant to go tailgate, 
uh, you know, camping. It would definitely work for like a hot and fast grill. Oh, it yeah. gets hot. Tailgate. Yeah, it gets <laughs> real hot. It's real hot. <laughs> so you tried it on a table, right, mm-hmm. Mark? So oh, plastic. Table. Hold on. Who's your big idea that was? Yeah, <laughs> the big boss from across the table decided he wants to put the PK Go on a plastic table. So, but to I mean, try it I, out. Well, I, it does give you one thing because a lot of times you're camping with it. You don't yeah. want to, you know, you want to know if you're going to sit it on a wooden table if it's going to catch on fire, yeah. right? Which yeah. I think you'd be fine on a picnic table, but it does. I mean, it does get hot, and it will make a white table bubble up <laughs> within about twenty minutes. You need a sheet pan or something to set it. Yeah, up. yeah. That was. I mean, that's how I run that little M grill when we go compete. I yeah. just take a sheet pan, flip it over upside down, set it on it, and it works fine. Yeah, and I did that. I used to do that with the. They had a PK Go. What was the little TA? It was a TX cart. Yeah. Or, mm-hmm. That one and the other tabletop version. It was like a tabletop yeah. cradle. It was like a little sled. Floor. And I would put the classic in that and cook on a table, but I always slid um, a sheet pan underneath it and then another aluminum pan in that to block it. This one, you definitely need something. Cause, uh, it might have been. Me. Now, are you going to run it? Do you have to run it wide open like that? Probably not. No, but that's cool. We were just trying <laughs> to see how hot we could get it. And it what was it? The great tip was, was it was over seven fifty, yeah. almost eight hundred. So Could it was warped the it was hot. But yeah, that, that little thing rocks. I like I liked it. I thought the you know I thought it was a uh, cool little cooker. I could see spending your money on it, yeah, especially I mean, if I mean if they if they come up with a set of grill grates for it, which perfect. I'm sure Brad's got something you know in the yeah, perch. Yeah, got to have something. Just cut works. them down. We can make something happen. That one's one that I would like to have a solid set that just drops in there. And it's just grill grates, or you, you know, get it from the side. I would, it don't need to be straight on, right? Because it's too short. Too short, right? Makes sense. I would do it. I wonder. I, might, I bet I could set the little circle when it's made for the ninja <laughs> in, the, yeah. in the center of it. <laughs> well, and just use it, clean it each time. And, you probably use one of the edge pieces off, like the egg, like the radius part. You might could sit right in there. I have to look at it. So with this grill, you really get two grills at one if you buy the Go. That's what I liked kit. about it. The lid comes off, so you can charcoal grill on one side, and then the lid makes another. It has another fire grate, another set of grill, uh, cooking grates that go on there, and then they have a hibachi top, so you can buy. I think you can even buy half the grill if you just want the hibachi, right? Yeah, I think, I think so. so. And it comes with a little cover, but yeah, it's like yeah. one sixty nine for just the hibachi and. Uh, Two fifty for the whole yeah. unit. It's pretty slick though. They they put some design into that thing. I, yeah. I was I was impressed with it. I like, it's like two hundred sixty nine bucks. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. so. It's it's not cheap, but you get a twenty year warranty and it's made by PK. I mean, you know, it's. I like the PK go because it's just cute. It's like a little, I don't know, time capsule. You think that's going to be the thing that women are going to like about it? Oh, you can get this cute little grill. Yeah, get it pink. <laughs> get it pink, baby yeah. blue. I wouldn't say it's cute. It's a cool little grill. Well, I'm looking at the hibachi section now. Like, if you just get it, and it comes with its own little lid yeah. that covers it. It's pretty sharp. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I can't I see like buying just to... that though. I, I gotta have a lid. Buy just the lid. Yeah, I want the whole. If I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get the flip. I mean, I like how you get two grill services out of this one little, you know. Yeah, cute little. I mean, that is cool. I don't know if I would ever use the top a whole lot, but it's good to have that option. So if you, if I say if he was out cooking a whole bunch of burgers, or Brats yeah. or something like that. Yeah. You could definitely do it. That would be a good thing. The simmer brats on one side, grill them off on the other. See? I already got an idea. <laughs> well, I like, I guess they, I think they changed the exhaust vents, you know, from the 360 because they got more spring tension. I was ask that. They close tighter. Yeah. And just from looking at it, I don't think rainwater can get in them. And cool. my, my 360, you let it sit in rain and you yeah. got a wet pit. Yeah. And it'll, you know what? It'll get, uh, fuzzy on you quick it'll get, it'll get right <laughs> I've, had, I've had mine get a little fuzzy not paying attention to it so do you like the um vents better you i think do that on was the an top. improvement yes. yeah i need I, you know it's, we need to do a rain test on them should have got so, the water hose out the well we could hose. have yesterday <laughs> yeah, afternoon. yeah just sit it out there i can see this whole review thing getting a little crazy with you too like well, let's see if we can the, completely I mean, are they, destroy are they bulletproof yeah. Or yeah. 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 that was it can we run over it with the truck yeah what happens if you do this I can see that. That goes with my fails because we have stuff like that that happens all the time. I mean, you let my little nephew borrow a PK and he'll dump it out of the truck running 40 miles an hour. And they're like, I don't know what happened. Yes. Did that happen? Yeah. My first PK, I let him borrow it. He had it sitting upright and they were 
going from, I can't remember if they were coming home from a contest or what, just right down the road. He like had it set still on the sand. Oh, and yeah. Stuff. It was laid out across Pleasant Hill, charcoal everywhere. Like, did y'all recover it? Oh yeah, it don't close now, but he's still cooking on it. Oh, is that the wheels grill? The wheels grill. <laughs> wheels grill. I, run, I, I I did a good job on yours one time. At the That's the same day. one. Oh, was that it? grill's had a tough life. <laughs> I was heating my butter up on it, but I, just, I was like, I had, you know, I wasn't gonna leave it up there long. It's a plastic. It was closed, container. and you put the. A plastic. He's, he loves melting plastic. <laughs> we done it yesterday. He done it to my PK. Melted butter and it just all ran down Marsh Grill. All like, the plastic too? You can, it won't come off. No. There's no way. I, I got country crock stanked on the side of my grill now. <laughs> you, you would have to uh, sandblast it probably <laughs> to get all that. Because that grease just locked in it. And you won <laughs> and first you place that night. I did. I did. I should have bought you a new one. Should've. It won $8,000. Yeah. Day. I can't even get a $400 grill out of the deal. <laughs> I'm going to get you a slow and sear. Yeah. So we did the pick go. We did the um, the grill gun. And then the meter. The meter. Oh, yeah. And we did the attachment for a pellet grill. What's the, the heat wave? Yeah, the Smoking Brothers heat yeah, wave. Yeah. That, you know. We were not impressed, huh? I wouldn't. I wouldn't you know, you had I mean, to watch the video, but. How much was that? It's 40 bucks, 40 bucks. which ain't a whole lot for a yeah. grilling accessory. But I expected it to do a lot more. Did you get grill marks as it was no. advertised? No. no. Which they said just sear, you know, like a good even sear. But I mean, what'd y'all cook? Burgers? Burgers. Yeah, we just did some burgers. If you can't cook burgers, I mean, they were good burgers. They were good burgers, but we took it off. And then I bought like a dozen burger patties from Kroger. And so we cooked two to see how it did with the sear. And then at 400 degrees, that's what it recommended. And they were good. They were good burgers. I mean, they cooked perfect, you know, 20, 25 minutes total, I think it was. But uh, but then you removed we it. We took it off and put the rest of the burgers on there, and they was were just as good or better. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ran it at 400 the same way. And they, I mean, I could see where that's, the, my, that's my new go to big burger cooker. 400 degrees on a pellet grill, and, and you flip them halfway the, through. They're smoky. They had they're, a pretty pink. Yeah. Smoke, smoke ring, ring on the outside. Yeah. It's, if you want the perfect medium burger, it's, yeah. it's 15 minutes at 400 and then flip them and 15 more minutes and throw you some cheese on there, five minutes, and they're done. So I, I let him know a little secret yesterday about What's burgers, that? and I can't believe y'all ain't done it yet. Oh, yeah. Should What's we that? tell her? You're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's involved, man. You got it. For every, I've never tried this. For every pound of ground beef, you put about a tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons in the ground beef. Mix you, it in. You but can't th- screw that burger up. You could cook it t- till next week. And it's still good. It's still going to be greasy and yeah. uh, delicious See, and juice here's, running down. Here's Would a you put may- Have you ever put mayo and meatloaf or anything? I never have. No, never I never put haven't. a burger. I love putting mayo. I will now. Yeah, I'm going to try it. Here's a little known fact. Mark likes mayonnaise as much as I do. He does. <laughs> he sends me all these memes whenever it's somebody like eating mayonnaise. Oh, or do you mayonnaise lick it out? Look, or- if you can't lick mayonnaise off a spoon, are you really Southern or like, <laughs> come on? Who does that? Except you two. <laughs> <laughs> hey, two out of Do you of go three. in the pantry to do it, or you just do it right there? I do the it table? in public. <laughs> you don't let, go in the pantry and shut Let the, the world know. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to I, lick the spoon. Will you just squeeze like a pack of mayo out? I mean, uh, if you got a little severe. It just depends. Yeah. <laughs> depends on how bad the hank craving depends is. On what yeah. you're if it. you're talking about pack mayo, you got to be careful, because you might have white pack mayo. Then again, you may have the yellow, the yellow and I'm just or what if it's the half and half? <laughs> or it's <laughs> vinegar on <laughs> You got vinegar on one end and just white glob on the other. Or grease. Uh, I hate it when it just looks like oil. It's been separated. Uh, There's nothing wrong with mayonnaise. mayonnaise no, is but good you're not, I don't think it's meant to be eat standalone. <laughs> I think it's meant to go in something, some kind of way. Standalone mayo. You've got. <laughs> well, see, I thought I was the only one. Uh, like, I like it in soup. Chili, I mean, See? but my daddy, so I may have told this story to y'all before, but when me and Emily first started dating, she come over house, it was summertime, we were having tomato sandwiches, BLTs, you know, we got done eating, we had a big old plate of watermelon, and daddy kind of elbowed me, and he took that mayonnaise, and he smeared on that watermelon, and Emily was like, just, but, oh my God, uh, like, what is he doing? And I said, we love mayonnaise, and he took a bite and threw it in his mouth, and I looked at him, I said, how's that taste? He said, Tastes like you put mayonnaise on watermelon. <laughs> oh, 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 I gave it up. Oh, man, it was terrible. No and it was way. like, do you really eat that? And I'm like, no, he was messing with you. I've heard of people making pineapple sandwiches. 
like mayonnaise, yeah, black pepper, yeah. and pineapple rings. Mayonnaise, but, pears, and cheese. Yeah, yeah I've heard of that, that thing. Either. Mayonnaise, pears, and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a that dumb strange combo. I don't know what it is. I've How would you come up with that? That's like, like when you have nothing sandwiches. else in the you don't have nothing in the pantry or in the refrigerator. No, that's like a delicacy. Mayonnaise, pears, and cheese. My grandmother will come walking down on Thanksgiving with a big platter. Like the half pears, half of the pears, pears yes. dollop of mayonnaise, I'm, and then shredded cheese on top of is it. Is it melted or anything? It's almost it's like just, it's a salad. No, it's not. <laughs> Pear salad. <laughs> So you could chunk it up and then mix it in, toss some mayonnaise and put the cheese on it. Like I've had now I've seen, you know, peaches with cottage cheese or yeah. pears See, that's cottage terrible. cheese. Imagine that. But See, I can't do cottage cheese. It's like cheese. creamy. I like cottage cheese. It reminds me of, you know, ricotta or something like that. It's a weird texture. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's just a little curdled. Yeah. Curdled it's like milk. the bad mayonnaise in a pack, you yeah. know. <laughs> I don't, you know what I don't like about cottage cheese is when all that water juice gets in there and you got to drain that off. I thought you were supposed to turn it in. It's like sour cream, too. Yeah, it kind of is. So, Mark, um, what you been cooking on your channel? Uh, A little bit of everything. We're trying to... Let's pull up. Trying to venture out, get some new recipes going. Um, I'm hoping I can get the one video from last week uploaded today, which is grilled fillets and with a... Hang on. I keep getting it wrong. Anchovy steak butter. I keep wanting to call it sardine Ooh. steak butter. But oh. Sardine butter. That's even better. But no. <laughs> possum sardine butter. Yeah. You got a roll. <laughs> That's my dad's favorite brand of sardines. The, possum the roll brand. top lid. <laughs> but no, it's anchovy steak butter. It's got uh, sauteed mushrooms, garlic, uh, thyme. It's got a ton of flavor. It's real savory. Yeah. And it, I mean, my wife will not eat anything remotely fishy. And she loves it. Yeah. I mean, we keep, no joke. I said in the video, we keep a little bit in the fridge and we do. Cause like, we'll take, get a spoon of it if we're like sauteing zucchini or mushrooms or vegetables. Mm-hmm. And it, man, it brings so much good flavor. So I, is it just a salty savoriness? It's not real a savory. No. Yeah. And I mean, it almost, once you get the butter and everything mixed in, it's real beefy. Like, that's what Emily said. She tried just a little bit of the butter to make sure it was right. And she's like, man, it tastes like, it tastes like steak, you know? But when you're cooking the mushrooms down and like drying them out, they get that real, like beefy, like savory note. Oh, yeah, they do, Def- yeah. Definitely. So, I mean, you get it all combined, and it just it's a good topping. Yeah. And it's enough ingredients in that butter once you top them that, like, all the good stuff stays on top of the steak, not just the butter. So you can get, like, a little bit of bite oh, of that yeah, thyme, yeah, a little yeah. bit of bite of garlic. Yeah. It goes good. So did you melt the anchovies down, or is it, does it, do they disappear and just leave you flavor? So, Or can you still get a little bit piece of fish? No, you don't get any like, fish. How do you make it? Yeah, how, how do you – what's the recipe? So you can use – like I'll take three sticks of butter and then usually a tablespoon of either anchovy or anchovy paste, mm-hmm. which the paste works really good. Where do you good. find that? Just Kroger, Walmart, they yeah. have it. Um, the anchovy paste, it's not my favorite to use, but it will get you by. But I'll take like the whole anchovies and olive oil, take them out, either run them through a food processor or dice them up really good. I got one of them little choppers. I chopped it up till it was almost – just a paste. Yeah, yeah. Fold it in. You never see it. It darkens the butter up just a little bit, but it's just a real rich, salty flavor. So you don't, mm-hmm. you didn't cook it. No, no, no. It's just straight out of the can. Yeah. And then you mix that with the butter, and that's the it. The butter, the garlic, okay. thyme, and the thing is with the mushrooms and butter, like I'll chop them up real small, put them in a skillet on low heat, and cook all that moisture out, and cook them down to where they're almost crispy. Like I don't put any salt on them. I don't put any oil in the pan. And I've done the mushrooms and garlic and roasted the garlic and roasted those mushrooms with the garlic and then Man. fold that in the butter. That's some serious stuff right Heck there. Yeah, that's a serious steak butter. But <laughs> when you see the video, I started off with two cups of mushrooms. And by the time you cook them down, it might be a half a cup, if that. Yeah, Once they, they dry out and get real small. Yeah, yeah. But, did, um, did you experiment with the cured egg yolk? I hadn't yet. yet. Man, I got to, though. What's this now? Cured egg yolk. The sous vide everything, Guga, I think's his name. Yeah. He done the cured egg yolks. And he buys them or he makes no, them? No, he make makes them. them. You it's cure them salt. in salt and sugar. And it takes like a week. Oh, okay. How, you start out with a, just a regular egg? Yeah, just the yolk. You take you a regular egg, egg, you separate it. You make like a okay. salt well. Like, and you put little divots in the salt. Yeah, and you and put you, the egg yolk in there and cover it back up, stick it in the fridge, and it cures. It like. So it turns into a texture. It looks like butter. Yeah. You know, you know if you can imagine a boiled like, egg yolk yes, kind of. Yes, yes, okay. But it's not boiled. The salt, I guess, pulls the moisture out. 
causes it to and you grate it yeah, like you, zest. Yeah. yeah, and then he oh. mix it in with. A, I guess you mix it in with. He put he did it with bone marrow. Yeah, he made butter. the ultimate steak butter. Yeah. Hats off to him because that that was a lot of I work to make that. butter. Yeah, I want to try that bad. Oh, I I'd definitely try that. It was different. I've never seen it. I mean, I've yeah. never seen the egg yolk like that. Egg yolks. Definitely on the menu, for sure. Well, you know, I like anchovies. It comes in a, a classic Caesar salad. Mm-hmm. They have anchovies, and they use anchovies for that dressing, and it well, is I mean, Worcestershire sauce is anchovies, yeah. is it not? It is. It's definitely fish. Something. I don't know what kind. <laughs> so, I mean, well, but my problem is with anchovies, I've had some that you couldn't tell is anchovies. It's just yes. salty, savory. Good flavor, like yep. a good Caesar dressing. Then I've had some Caesar dressing where they've actually put some anchovy in it, and it tastes worse than a dead gum <laughs> fish house. <laughs> and like the dumpster behind the fish house. Yeah. And that I, I can't agree. stand. So you never know what you're going to get. Like, I've ate anchovy on pizza, and it'd be really good. You you would never known that's what it was. But then, you know, it's like sardines. Like, sardines are stout. I can't like, do sardines. No doubt you're eating fish, bad fish, <laughs> that shouldn't have been canned. Well, see, that's what it is. I mean, the anchovies I got, I didn't know it was a different cinnamon. Mikey was telling me, so they got like regular anchovies and I guess like water. I guess they're just like steam cooked or baked. And then you got like cured anchovies, which is what I've always thought anchovies were, were like a salt brine. Yeah. And these were like, Did you try it raw. Yeah, like just yeah, yeah. Bite of it. Yeah, it don't taste like fish. Yeah. I mean, but it was almost like a cured texture. Like yeah. I mean, it like Preserve. a hammy. Yeah. Yeah, and it didn't have any of that fishy taste. And they say like, once I thought about it and looked it up, it's like you pull the fishiness out when they cook them. So I guess it pulls some of that strong flavor out. Then you get just the salt. I don't know, but there's different ones, and I have had them like you said that would knock you down, like licking a catfish yeah. back. Yeah, and then you got the ones that are just salty and a little good. And it, it comes down to quality too, you know, yeah. with everything. Don't buy the possum brand. <laughs> Don't buy the possum and brand. And if you can't help it, stay away from the paste. The paste is... Is it loud? It's probably a lower it's quality. It's a little loud. Yeah. Yeah, I can't like, what it. would it take me to put it on toothbrush? It's probably... <laughs> oh, yeah. They probably use minnows or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got shad paste. The first time I made it, I used paste, and it you was... Mediterranean sardines. Yeah. There you go. It wasn't too bad with the paste, but... Well, Archibald the shad paste. <laughs> nope. I'm out. You also recently did um, a video where you explained how grill grates work. Did get a lot of oh, uh, we had a that? ton of questions. Like, because I mean, it. I guess if you just click on the video and watch it, it is kind of confusing because you see the grill set at 450 mm-hmm. degrees, but then you see me shoot the grates and they're 550 to 650. And the way a pellet grill works, I mean, that's how it, that's that's the reason grill grates make a pellet grill a great. Did you get people saying. It can't get it no can't hotter get that hotter than what that temperature. Yep. <laughs> I get that all the time. Well, I mean, they think of it as an oven. You know, yeah. yeah if you set an oven at four hundred degrees and you put grill grates in there, it's going to be four hundred degrees. I, I, it depends on the oven. My oven, our oven at home, cooks different on different shelves. If you want to get it hot, you cook down towards the bottom or that the top front right. left. And my regular old oven, it ain't nothing fancy. It's a whirlpool, I think. It'll uh, there's hot spots in it. So just because we got it set on three fifty bake. It'll burn something up in that front corner. It, d- it depends. I mean, that's the way. Well, that, these grills do the same yeah, thing. What the I grill mean, grates does is make it regulate it across because they act as a heat sink. Right. Soaks it up just like yeah, a radiator. Yeah. And that, they're closer to the fire. You know, right. it's just like if we're all standing out in the field and we got a campfire, whoever's closest to that fire is going to be hot. So with all yeah. yeah. So yeah. the same thing with the grill grates. Yeah. And just because that dial says 400, 450, don't mean that's what it is right there at grade no, level. That probe over level there against temp, the wall. Yeah. Great level temp and where the probes are are always different. So putting a the thermometer on the grill is like one of the worst things they could have done, really. Yeah. <laughs> because it lets yeah. people argue, like, oh. oh, I got it set at this temp. It's not going to, you know, it's not really doing that. So I want my money back. Or this one's broke. That's not That's not the fact at all. You got to learn to cook on that and where the, what your temps are on those grades. If you are. monitor everything with a digital thermometer, it's going to drive you nuts. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Like I'll go out there cooking on a pellet grill if we're smoking something. Put it on whatever you want. And I never look at that again. Just let it do its yeah. thing, you know. That's I use it for point. estimate cooking. Like even on the old hickory, something that's got a dial just like an oven. Every one of those racks don't cook at that same Mm-mm. temp. You still got to use some common sense and know how stuff's cooking. 
Well, I mean, like they cook. just set it for. It's not set yeah. and forget. Well, that's what I you mean. say. You got to learn your pit. Yeah, that's the key to it. First, you got to learn your pit. Then you can cook great things. I mean, look at the stick burners with microwave shelves. I mean, they're four hundred and fifty degrees difference. Yeah. But your yep. dial is only at two seventy five. Yeah. Right, right. So, that's a good one to explain too. So, like that meter probes, you could. I guess what we could do is get some onions or well, something and stick in it. Do they have just an air probe? Because you can't like lay that probe mm-hmm. in there. It'll just it'll. It's not designed to do that, right? I've seen a great, like, you know, people, we get a lot of questions like, hey, how do I, you know, check temperatures on my pit? You know, everybody does the biscuit test. Yeah. And, I mean, biscuit test shows you a little bit. I seen a guy the other day, uh, Mad Scientist Barbecue. He took little sponges, soaked them in water, probed them, and put them on his pit. And it's just like cooking meat because you're cooking the water off. That sponge took the same amount of time as it would a brisket to get to, get to 200 to degrees. all the moisture yeah. out of it. I mean, yeah. it was it was on there like six or eight hours. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. And yeah. I was like, you can simulate meat. So you could do, that's a good one you could do with that meter probe because you could put four of them in sponges. Sponges and put them soak wherever. sponges, saturate the sponges the same amount of time, same sponge, just cut it into four. Yeah, like he weighed them. I mean, he done yeah. it real scientific, like yeah. way over my head, but it was still a great idea. I just want to see what internal rate is compared to what that rate is at that great level right there. Yeah. And you can put one on the microwave shelf. You can put it in the hot, move it around, whatever. The microwave shelf don't play. Oh, yeah, it gets hot. <laughs> it's hot. It gets hot. But no, the Grill Great video, I learned something. I mean, it's the same thing. Every time we shoot a recipe or do anything, I'm learning something new. And, oh, you know, yeah. I thought that one was good because you can show the temperature below the grate, which it pegged the dot out within seconds. And then, the you know, the dial was still set on 450. I mean, it's, and, a, it's a lot of heat below them grates you don't realize there. Yeah. And I also think we kind of take for granted what we know, you know. Yeah. Um, when we say we got this grill set up with grill grates, there's some people that might not know what grill grates are. You know, yeah. they've never cooked with them, so you, you know, need to get you a some. little explaining. Yeah, you got to explain. Them. When we're trying to do a recipe, it's like I don't want to sit there and spend all my time talking no. about what these are and where you can get them and all that. But we do get a lot of questions. Yeah. Them chuck steaks though on them. God, what we cooked good. on them. They are so good. So you cook chuck steaks. You didn't turn it into a recipe that No, right? it wasn't a recipe. But, I mean, we got a grill. Yeah. <laughs> Had two chuck steaks ready to go. Time to eat. That's what you cooked in your How Girl Great Squire yeah. video. Yeah, I got it. I don't think I watched this hanger steak video you did. It was pretty tasty, too. I love hanger steaks. What are you season that with? What's in that? Oh, that's a grind, a grit, ain't it? Yeah. Black pepper, looks like. Or Black pepper. I can't remember that one. You also did those Hasselback potatoes on the pellet grill. Those would hurt you. So how did you do those? I love a good potato recipe. So we done it. Really, I mean, we cooked Hasselback potatoes a lot. I mean, that's probably one of my favorite ways to eat a potato because you can actually get flavor in it. You know, yeah, you can get yeah. butter and salt and all that in it. We cooked them just like a regular Hasselback, you know, baste them with a little bit of butter and onion. What is that? Where you slice them up like an accordion? Yeah, where they open up. They didn't really open up as much as yeah. I'd like, but... I think it's because they were in the cast iron skillet. They really didn't have that much room. Yeah. But you gain so much flavor from the butter sitting in the bottom of that skillet, browning with the garlic and the onions, and then just load the toppings up. I mean, all the cheese you possibly can fit in the skillet is what was on those <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> cheese and butter and all the onions good stuff. and garlic and good didn't stuff. Didn't put no mayonnaise on it, but maybe next time. Had to have been good. <laughs> mayonnaise, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> and you also did a... You did a pork butt and you used a, a white sauce. Mm-hmm. That was one. We of, had that for dinner last night. That was one of our older videos. I think that yeah. was the one we can't remember if that was the drum one or the ago. outlaw. Yeah. It's crazy. It don't feel like I've been doing it for a year. You have. You've grown your channel, man. It's almost, you're knocking on 30,000 subs. It's slowly but surely. Yeah, that's what it Tell is. Which one I see right here that I want some of right now. Is this adult lunchable? <laughs> <laughs> we had fun with that video. Bologna and cheese and crackers and pickles. Come on, man. That's on the list too to do a Hasselback chub of bologna. Let it slice it just like that and open Why it up. Why do they call it Hasselback? Is it, I have know. no idea. I guess Hasselhoff. Hasselhoff. <laughs> Time to Google. That's a good one. Hasselback. I don't. Sliced potatoes. <laughs> that would, I mean, accordion sliced potatoes. They call it Hasselback. I'll stick with mashed taters. Hey, that'd be good, too, if you could do that, then mash them. You might could. Or do like a double-baked potato. You could do a crown with it. That would be interesting. Like if you cooked Hasselbacks and then you kind of made them in a big circle, connected them, 
and then put your entree or whatever meat you're cooking in the center of it. That'd be a good presentation. Yeah. Always looking for a way to kick it up a notch. Jazz it up, man. That's what you got to put it two potatoes, though. If you just eat a potato, it's just a potato. Yeah. Maybe skillet fry with some onions and chop up hot dogs. I'm not a big, <laughs> I'm not a, we don't eat a lot. We don't eat a lot of potatoes at our house. I mean, we just don't. We don't buy, I mean, uh, unless some, it's going in something. We don't. Or uh, we're doing a steak night. Yeah, we'll steak, usually baked potatoes. potatoes. That's usually night. the way we do them. But that's, or um, I'll roast those little new potatoes. In the I, do like I do like those. them. Yeah. yeah. The little roasted, the the ones you buy that are like tricolored potatoes yeah. or whatever, or the baby Yukons mixed with the little purple ones and all that. Yeah, yeah. Those are so good cooked in bacon it's grease. so easy. Yeah. <laughs> a little bacon grease to go. <laughs> a little bacon grease. That'll fix you up. Sea salt, bacon grease, and those little potatoes. I used to do up. AP. And a little AP. That's, you can't go wrong with that. So what would be your favorite recipe, shell that he's cooked on a video? What oh. was the one you remember the most? Uh, That's a good question. That one's tough. Um, I'd have to say it's got to be a beef recipe. It's going to be like a tri tip or a, you know, a high end picanha. Yeah, pica- oh, the picanha might have it. <laughs> I remember how good that was. Yeah, melting. It's going to be a high grade beef wagyu beef. Yeah, got to be. I mean, I like the sandwiches and. That's a different kind of good. Yeah, yeah. That's I, like an enjoy. I this like is the tacos. like a. But the kind that'll make you like, make your eyes roll back, kind of thing. It's gonna be a. <laughs> no, <don't care. laughs> it's gonna be a high end beef. What's your favorite recipe that you've cooked? Probably I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to roll right into that. Probably a hanger or the picanha. Yeah. Hang, hanger's so good. It is good. It's a. A grilled buffalo chicken sandwich, you do. For <laughs> yeah, that one's good. But that's a different kind of good. Like I agree, it's that's a, a it's a whole different level. Yeah, that's like a meal. Like the one bite good is gonna have to be beef. Yeah, it's hard to beat it. It is. I don't know. Would, have Have I asked you this before? If you had to pick either eating cow or pig, you can either go beef or beef pig all day. You're gonna get rid of the pig. Yeah. You're gonna get rid of bacon. Yes. Get rid of sausage. Yes. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> He's cheesy pig. I do yeah. beef. Because I'm going to switch to elk or deer. Or... You can make sausage with whatever. It's not the same. Buffalo? I've never had a wild game or venison or anything like that that's anywhere close to. Well, I've got some stuff coming. We're going to see. Corn-fed beef. I've got, I've got some wild boar coming. So what if you took, speaking of that, like say say that was you couldn't eat pig anymore and you wanted sausage. Yeah, does that count wild boar? I guess. That's a pig. It, it squeals. Yeah. They're just one's domesticated, one's not, right? But what if you was to take like a a brisket point, grind it, and put pork sausage seasoning in it? Like beef sausage? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's good. not that good. Yeah. yeah, beef sausage is okay. It's okay. You got to mix it with some good fat. I mean, that's the whole thing, you know. And they say the brisket fat's the best beef fat. It's the best. I, mean, I think we could do it right. Kind. I mean, you know, a lot of those Texas joints serve it's beef sausage. I mean, some of them do mix pork with it too. But yeah, you can make it. I don't know if I've never had beef breakfast sausage, but why not? Try it. I've never. We had, do it with deer. Yeah. There's no difference. It's deer mixed with either beef fat. Usually, we use pork fat. Now, Shell, would you pick cow or bull? <laughs> <laughs> if you have to I'm eat a, the old bull, man, yeah, it's tough. It's y'all tough. didn't grow up like I grew up. We didn't get the same way. We're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> sell all these. We're gonna sell all these steers. And, and, and cows, heifers, I guess, right? But then we're going to keep the old bull to his last days, and then that's what we're going to eat for a year. <laughs> Stringy bull meat. It's, a little, it's, a, little, it's a little wangy. A little wild. <laughs> it's, not, it's not, I wouldn't say it's wild tasting. It's wangy tasting. Wangy. It's wangy. We, we throw. She made me, it was like we were first started dating. She's going to make me something. Was it chili or spaghetti or something I, like that? Might be hamburger. I don't know. And she had all this hamburger meat that she brought from her mom's. <laughs> I said, man, so <laughs> what you did to this spaghetti. And I was like, oh, it was the wangiest wild. It's just bull meat. Yeah, it's just bull meat. It's like, what? <laughs> I'll buy three dollars worth of ground beef. Keep spaghetti. from eating this again. Yeah, to keep from eating bull meat. Oh. <laughs> I do not recommend bull meat. <laughs> There's got I, to be something you can do. Glue? <laughs> something else. Some, 
some other kind of byproduct you could do. That old bull gave his all. Not telling how many calves he sired. <laughs> to have to, oh go down man. like that. Go down like In that. a pot of spaghetti. <laughs> pot of spaghetti. Just as strong as he tasted as he possibly could. I don't know if he smelled worse in the field or in that pot of spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> don't think you're fixing to eat a bull meat burger because... <laughs> <laughs> grew up eating bull meat burgers. That's what it is. That's the reason she like mayonnaise is so much. Is it a much. taste you just got to get? Yeah. She yes. put enough mayonnaise on it. You got to put so much to take a blue plate mayo on it to choke it down. You got my jaws hurting. Quit. <laughs> hmm. bull, bull meat burger. I didn't know anything was wrong with it until I had a slumber party when I was like 12, 13. My mom made bull meat burgers for everybody. <laughs> And nobody ate it. Everybody's like, what's wrong with these burgers? I think the meat's gone bad. <laughs> A little tainted, ain't it? No, that's just old Jerry the Bull. <laughs> he's been out there 20 years, but he finally had to put him down. It's all right. We're going to use him. <laughs> you can make some dog. I wonder if they might, dogs might not even eat bull meat treats. <laughs> Turn it down. Uh. They turn more than their meat and <laughs> to treat. <laughs> yeah, they do. They got bully sticks. <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. so what do you have coming up, Mark? Uh, What's your next? We got a recipe this weekend. We're doing a my version of like a fall style pork tenderloin sandwich. Oh, so, okay, what what makes it fall style? The good ingredients. <laughs> now I'm gonna do. Uh, it's Is it gonna like be apples and stuff. Yeah, we're gonna do like an apple pie filling, cook down yeah. with some onions. Do a good topping with some like brie cheese. Oh, yeah. So, and we're going to do like a, I don't know what you call those huge, like, it's like an overgrown kaiser roll, but we're, we're going to do just yeah. one large sandwich and then it's cut like it like a roll. pie. Yeah. So. Or like a, a muffaletta type? Yeah, like a big bun. Yeah. You know, cut it like it's going to be a round one. It's going to be long. round, oh, right. That's cool. Yeah. Where do you find those? Don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> going to the store this week. Whole Foods. I yeah. think, no, I think Kroger has them. Here Panera alone. bread, you could probably go. Uh, Panera bread would be a good choice. Oh, yeah, you could go and just buy the bread. Yeah. I want to be able to like get the sandwich, like cook the pork tenderloin, get all the onions cooked down, top it, put the brie cheese on, slide it in there on like a little cookie sheet, and then baste it with a little brown butter and like brown that bread up a little bit. And that sounds so good. You were, we were working on a recipe pork loin and apples. Yeah. That was one we should have. You still got that content. That's a good, that was a fail disaster. That always happens. Yeah. yeah. It was not a good one. Well, too, I mean, it, I was we, overcrowding was, the pan. It was a whole bunch of bad things going yeah, on. Yeah. Didn't it was, get any color. I forget what pit I was cooking it on. But you scored the top and it looked. It just, yeah, it was a disaster. Worst pork loin I ever cooked. Yeah. I don't even know if we ate it. I think I threw it out. It's like, screw this. It's I we ate garbage. it. I don't know. It, it wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. What do you have coming up? I don't know. No, <laughs> no I think I'm going to do some. Um, some chili dogs. You gonna do your chili recipe for the dogs? Like not just your standard chili, but like no, the. It's just gonna be chili dog chili. You know the chili sauce. Basically. Yeah, the sauce style. Yeah, no, no beans, no vegetables. It's just. I mean, I might almost like not juice onion, but get it pretty daggum close to where it's yeah, super yeah, minced. Yeah, the garlic too, where it cooks down to nothing, and then meat, and then chili seasoning. And then sauce, and that's it. It's so when you do your chili, have no you ever tomatoes, like chili sauce? When you do your chili, have you ever like cooked the beans down separate and then like puree them and use that as a thickening like agent? He no. has. I usually, them up. I, 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 but not in chili. I do. I usually do that in my red beans and rice. That what it I pull is, out yeah. some, pull out some of the beans, mash them, and then add them back to the pot and use it as a thickener. Yeah. It's really good. It works. So great I wonder if for you do it in chili. Rice. You could. I don't know so if it changes. Chili, Bean See, I, flavor. I don't like a watery chili. I like my chili to be thick anyway, so it's usually like I reduce it down to yeah. where that water. That's what the simmer does without a lid, cooks it down to where the tomatoes soften up good, but then it also kind of thickens itself. So I'm not a big bean guy in chili. I'm not. Either. I like a can. Yeah, I'm like not a, one I'm can. Not, yeah, but like fifty fifty. No, like my mom makes chili. Oh, it's mainly beans. That's like how she, Emily is. Like, that, well, I think that's the way they grew up making chili. Beans were cheap. Filler. You had to buy yeah, yeah. meat. And so they put one pound of beef or whatever and make a pot of chili, but they might be six cans of beans in there <laughs> and then canned tomatoes. Because you're feeding 20 Yeah, because really. you're feeding, yeah. it's a pot of chili. And so you're stretching it. You not have to put too much meat in it. That was that was where that came from, putting beans in it. I mean, 
Yeah, that makes sense. Um, at least in it, Arkansas. Oh, supposedly good. the traditional one doesn't have beans at all. Yeah, it's just, it's more like a chili stew. Yeah. Um, when I make it, I only put like one can. Yeah, that's plenty. I think so too. I used to pick them out when I was a kid. What you sold me on the cilantro and chili. It's good. That is like. Top for a I'm, topper. Yeah, I've never yeah. tried it. It's really good. Cilantro, I just like cilantro. Yeah. Now we did do chili on the Dutch oven in the fireplace on the back porch. Yeah, how was that? You doing a little more was, Dutch oven cooking? It, it actually surprised me. I've never cooked like over coals in a Dutch oven. And I just like got the way a, it's meant to be. Yeah, like old <laughs> yeah. school way to do it. Yeah. And I just put a fire in the fireplace and I got like a, a log rack that's raised so I can scoop the coals out from under it. I scooped the coals, put a few under that Dutch oven. And I mean, it cooked perfect. It was just like on the perfect heat, just to get you a little bubble every now and then. We cooked each other like four hours on it. I mean, it turned That's out good. great. Yeah. yeah. Did it? It's fun. He's cooking outside too. Yeah. Right and the there. weather was yeah. nice. Set on the fireplace. Football and games were on. Yeah. <laughs> and it got back to 80 degrees. But yeah. It's cool. It's going to be cool. It'll be a good weekend cool. this yeah. weekend. Um. So, what do y'all have a plan for your next four videos that you're going to do for your review channel coming up? I thought of something last night and I meant to write it down. I forgot. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> we do need to start a list on that though, Mark. Hey, yeah, next yeah. spring, we need to put bug assault on the list. I can tell you Just that have, one works. The flies are still out. I mean, have like a fly dove hunt with it. Yeah. <laughs> see how yeah. you got 30 minutes. We'll see put how a couple pieces of fruit back. out. Yeah. You got to check them in. And then we'll weigh them. So who's got the most tag them? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if they're man. hard to find sometimes if you pop them right. Oh, does, <laughs> that new one you got is like wait a 10 we, gauge. Wait till we do crawfish cook and <laughs> put all the heads in the garbage can. Yeah, they'll be here. <laughs> we'll have a fly hunt the next two days. Baiting them. <laughs> I thought I was pretty good with the fly gun until you came over and started playing with it. You, you wax them. Yeah. Oh, man, we was, pop, pop, we was shooting. <laughs> but that day was like, I don't know what was going on, but flies, there was thousands out there that day. like... A metal stand to put a piece of sheet metal on top of it, some thick metal, and then mount it to a table and then use the <laughs> the grill gun. <laughs> we gonna bait them up and just roast them. <laughs> Send your wings. That would be hilarious. Oh, that's cruel. I don't think flies care. <laughs> no, they, they land on poop. Fly, little fly feelings. <laughs> yeah. Anything that'll land on poop, don't care. Well, that's all I had today. Abandoned, maybe maggots. So, um. Check out the new channel. It's called Out the Smoke. Out the Smoke. Out yeah. the Smoke. We'll be sharing it's it. It's not live. It's going to be a minute. Yeah. We're early concept. We've shot a few videos, but we're having fun with it. It's going to be something a little different than what we're doing recipe wise. Yes. That's the main thing. And, uh, and y'all might be check out some cool new yeah. products. Yeah. Keep watching. They might blow up something eventually. That's how oh, it works. It's coming. I got some tanner not at the house. That's exactly what I, that's that's what, that's one of the reason why I agreed to start this. So I can blow some stuff up. So I think the city's mad at us now. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what kind of permits we got to get. But we're fixing to blow some shit. <laughs> Especially, Mark. Where can they find you? You can find us at Facebook, Instagram, and of course YouTube. Make sure to check the channel out, and we appreciate all y'all support. Man, we had a good time. And it's Swine Life BBQ. Yes, that's the most important part. Yeah. Where can they find us, yo? If you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's How to BBQ Right on Facebook, Instagram, and of course YouTube. If you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell on Instagram. All right. Well, Mark, thanks for coming and Thank hanging out with us so today. Much. We'll do it again soon, and we appreciate y'all tuning in, giving us a listen. We'll see y'all next time. Got to get back to work now. Time to go to work, <laughs> Mark.